Okay, this is a 75 RD250. We're gonna be installing the Neutronic optical electronic ignition system. So basically this uses an optical style sensor instead of a hollow effect style sensor. Uh, and this will replace the points, condensers, all that stuff. And yeah, hopefully be a lot more reliable. And start it up, get to some of that musical two-stroke sound going. It's the last hoorah with the points, so to speak. So let's uh, see how she does. So this should be everything that we need here. A few things are definitely gonna be optional. I've got an impact gun here uh, just to help get the bolt off for the cam. And then a heat gun there to heat up the grommet. We'll have to slide some wiring through. Uh, you will need, I believe this is either a six or quarter inch little wrench to get the wires off of the post here for the uh, condensers and stuff. And then eight 10 millimeter with ratchet, 10 millimeter ratchet wrench, three eighths drive with a socket for the spark plug. And then your GIS screwdriver, a couple picks. Got a quarter inch and three sixteenths flat blade screwdriver, regular Phillips head. And then this one here I recommend for Anybody working on four wheelers for dirt bikes, uh, impact screwdriver set and a nice hammer there. And then this, but it's a top dead center dial indicator for two strokes. You can use this to do your mechanical timing on four strokes and stuff also. So highly recommend getting one of those. It's worth the investment. Uh, this one here from Economy Cycle is about 70 bucks. So it's really not too pricey. And this one is in uh, metric instead of standard. So it measures and millimeters instead of inches but yeah that's pretty much all you should need there to uh, get this job done and i'm just going to get back to it side note also maybe some zip ties to tidy up the wiring and stuff but yeah that should be just about it so we've got the carburetors off and the side cover off i'm going to start removing the points and stuff here so we've got two screws here for the base plates of the points and before we do that we'll have to loosen up this screw right here and this screw right here so that we can get these wires off of those posts for the points and then we've got two more screws here for the condensers and we can get all of the points condenser stuff off of there uh, once we're done with that we'll have three more screws which is this left hand one here top right hand and bottom right hand here so don't mess with those nuts there on the, on the alternator housing
together. So I got my driver out. I said, "Let me see what's going on." Not permanent stuff, just like cool stuff here. Yeah, just some vertical levels here. Smooth these up a little bit here. Try to tighten them down. So now I'll go ahead and put all this stuff off to the side. So based on the way this looks, I'm definitely uh, convinced that's what our issue was. A bunch of rust in that one spot there, and pitting, and yeah, just bad. So okay, so first we're actually gonna put this cam in here. Let's go in there. And for this thing, there is a little bitty keyway on the back side. Basically, it looks like it's for detent. So. Yeah, right there is where that needs to line up with. I actually had to loosen up these two screws here on this RD250 so that I could make room to clearance the blade on the end of the rotor here. So now I can get back to it. You can see I got this laid out here, the two sensors, so that I'll basically bolt up like that. Oh my goodness, freaking spider, it's crawling right by me, look at him, Jesus, look at the pinchers on that thing, he's about to die. <laughs> anyway, yeah, just going to snug it up a little bit for now, so that we can set the timing on those just right. A little bit more snug than that. We will need a 12 millimeter socket as well to rotate this, but we're gonna rotate it a bit. Oh, that's not a 12 mil. So now that we have our sensors on there and we don't have any clearance issues with the blade contacting the sensors or the uh, brushes there. Uh, just verify by turning it 
counterclockwise order of operation and making sure no contact anywhere. So we're good to go in that regard. Next thing I'm gonna move on to is this wire harness here. So I'm gonna get the heat gun, kind of heat this stuff up a little bit, push that grommet through this way towards us, and we can start fishing these pins through that grommet and start with the wiring and stuff going up to there to the CDI box and the coils, and then not too far from being done after that. Okay, so I started to thread this through this grommet here. Basically what I had to do is heat up that grommet with the heat gun here. And once I did that, I was able to fish these pins through individually. So I just put the flat side of it down. That way it wouldn't scratch up any of the wires while it was going in through the grommet. And once I got it in there partially, I just took this angled... Um, pick here and then use that to help push it through and kind of just pinch it and then pull it through there and push it through but yeah so we've got that ran now and it would be nice to put it in this original sheathing here for the wiring but it's not going to be an option unfortunately so just pull all this extra through here oh push it through all right so if we're looking at the CDI like this right here we got the connector looking at it that way and we take a look at the manual right here you can see this LED right here is LED or lamp number one this is lamp number three in the middle here and lamp number two on the right hand side there and then the pins here are numbered one through five from the right to the left so one two three four and five on the end there and this instruction manual here says one as the blue wire which would be this wire here coming out of the harness we ran earlier running to lamp Number one, which would be pin number three, so this pin right here. So if we look at this right here, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but this is labeled. It says BK, so black would go on this far left pin. Blue would go in the third pin, so that would be one, two, three down right there. Yellow would go below it, and red on the right-hand side there. So I'll go ahead and lay that out. And if you notice, there are little divots in the connector here for the direction of the pin to go. So I'll just press this one in here, get it wrapped around the way it needs to be there. And then we will do the blue one next. So that'll actually face the opposite direction because of the pin. And I'm just going to hold the wires that I have in there connector spot in there with my thumb so we'll do yellow next right there and I'm just gonna route the wires in a way that it won't bind up in the connector or anything there And then red one will be on the bottom here, looking at it from this direction. And there we have it all pinned out. So you can see black wire farthest to the left. Blue wire is the third one from the left. Yellow is second from the right. And red one is in the furthest to the right there. And that's how it'll go into the CDI, just like that. But need to also put this little stuff right here into the connector part right there to waterproof that. And once we got that done, we can put the top of this together there, click it together, and screw it into the CDI there with the self-tapping screws. 
that it comes with here. The sensors and stuff are switched. Uh, so this pickup here would be for the <clears throat> number one cylinder on the left hand side and the left hand sensor would be for the right hand side if you set it up the way that they tell you to here in the instructions. So what we could do here actually is change out the black and blue wire and that would make it so that the gray wire on this harness here is still on the right hand side uh, number two cylinder coil like it's supposed to be in the original factory harness. So uh, you can do that if you want to, but like I said, I'm for continuity for our bikes here, since but that one's already set up that way, I'm just going to continue on and do it as they explain to in the instruction manual here. And I am going to keep this instruction manual for in case it's ever sold later on, people will know uh, how to diagnose this. All right, I've now got my connector all plugged into the CDI here and also plugged in the brown, orange, and gray connector that goes from the CDI to the coils here. So I went ahead and plugged in the female bullet connector there to the brown one on the left hand coil and then the other part of the new harness that has a male plug I just plugged into the one side of the red and black terminal right there and then the right hand brown wire coil wire goes to that terminal as well like i said earlier uh the gray wire will now go to the left hand coil and the orange wire will now go to the orange wire of the right hand coil and if you want to swap it to be like it was from the factory you just have to swap out the black and blue wire in the cdi here so just for continuity for our bikes, uh, I'm going to follow the manual here as they say to do it. So the right hand pickup here, we want the trailing edge, which is this edge here, to line up in the middle of the sensor at uh, two millimeters before top dead center on the number one cylinder. So I'm going to take my spark plug out, get my top dead center dial indicator over there, get this at top dead center, then back it off two millimeters in the opposite direction, which would be clockwise, two millimeters, and that will set our ignition timing right there. So to adjust that, we will use a flat blade screwdriver right here. Uh, once we have this turned where it needs to be at two millimeters before top dead center. So yeah, you just gotta kinda tinker with it. Yeah, we're gonna get this all wrapped up here, get it sparking where it needs to, and then we can go ahead and test fire this thing. All right, about to take a cruise on the RD250 here. My dad's gonna be on the DT250. Be a good comparison, kinda. Oh, let's see how much gas I got in here.
yeah, electronic ignition seems to be doing good. Seems to be timed really well. It's starting really easy. And uh, yeah, uh, definitely more work to do on it. You can see I cleaned it up some, got the sissy bar off of there. It looks a lot better without that. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave those down below. And also, if you think I've earned your subscription today, go ahead and smash on the sub button. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.